Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. <coughs> um, I will talk about operations on, on vectors, certain um, fundamental operations. It's basically vector, vector arithmetic. Now, when we talk about arithmetic, we usually um, have in mind uh, numbers and manipulation with numbers like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's basic arithmetic. Now, with vectors, we will be dealing <coughs> under the topic arithmetic, um, addition and subtraction of vectors. And uh, as far as multiplication and division, we will be considering multiplication by a real number and division by a real number, not multiplication uh, vector by vector. This is a separate topic. There are two kinds of multiplication of uh, vector by vector. One is called scalar or dot product and another is called vector or cross product. And that will be separate topics. So today this lecture is about multiplication and division by real numbers and uh, addition and uh, subtraction of vectors. Now vectors are new objects. Mathematicians just came up with this. It's something which combines in itself the lengths and the direction, these two components. Now, the operations, arithmetic operations on vectors should be defined, uh, how should I say, it, naturally. So, people who deal with these operations would agree that this is exactly what operations of addition or subtraction or multiplication by 25 are supposed to be. So this natural approach is very important. So any kind of a definition should be justified by some common sense. And uh, that's what I will try to explain in this lecture. I will try to put some common sense behind the, uh, the definition of arithmetic operation. OK, so let's start. The first operation which I wanted to define is multiplication of the vector by a natural number, like multiplication by 2, multiplication by 25, multiplication by 1, for instance. Now, how naturally can it be defined? Well, uh, uh, what, what I'm suggesting right now, and that's what actually mathematicians decided to, to define, is very simple thing. If you have a vector, then to multiply it by 2, 1, uh, 25, or whatever else is, retain the direction of the vector, and just make it longer by this factor, by 2, by 25, by 1, whatever it is. Well, by the way, in particular, multiplication by 1 means that the lengths will stay exactly the same, so since we retain the direction, so the vector stays the same which basically implies the rule that multiplication by 1 doesn't change the vector. Multiplication by 2 makes it twice as long. So it will be about that long. Multiplication by 25 would be 25 times longer. I consider this a very natural um, definition. Now, what's also very important is that certain properties of multiplication which we used to have with numbers, for instance, commutative law, associative law, will definitely be preserved here. Um, I, I don't want to prove it right now. I will probably um, do it as a problem, actually, which means I will ask you to prove it first, and then I will explain in the lecture. But yes, all these um, laws are supposed to be um, uh, held. So for instance, if you, if you have a vector I will use the lowercase legend letter and uh, arrow on the top. And you multiply it by number m. And then the result, now this is m times longer than a originally was. And the result I'm multiplying by n, so it will be even n times more than that. What does it actually mean? It's the factor which has exactly the same uh, direction as a but its length will be multiplied by m and then multiplied by n. But length is a real number, which means whether we multiply it by m and then n, or by n and then m in any order. So these are supposed to be exactly the same results. 
So this is some very, very brief um, introduction to, to, to proof of all these laws. But I don't want to stop uh, any longer. Uh, I will introduce uh, a little later this. So this is multiplication by a natural number. It's easy. It's natural. And that's why it's natural. All right. Now, how about division? Well, division by natural number, let's just think again. What is um, the definition of the division if you are dealing with numbers? What does it mean that 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2? Well, it actually means that 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, right? So, in case of vectors, if I want to divide vector by n, it actually means to find another vector which, if multiplied by n, would give a. Now, obviously, if you take exactly the same uh, direction and just shorten the lengths by the factor of n, so this would be 1 nth of the original vector, then obviously if multiplied by n, using whatever the definition I just talked about, how to multiply a vector by uh, some natural number, I will get the original a. So that's why dividing by natural number n <coughs> is very simple. You just retain the direction and shorten um, the lengths of the vector by this particular factor. Now, if we can multiply by a natural number, and we can divide by a natural number, and all these manipulations are with lengths only, which is, the natural, which is the real number, obviously, what we can do now, we can multiply vector by any rational number, because it actually means first you multiply by m, and we know how to do it, and then you divide it by n, and we know how to do that. And again, since all these manipulations are with lengths only, direction is the same as before, then these are just manipulations with real numbers, and we know that um, we can uh, multiply by a rational number by first multiplying by numerator and then dividing by denominator. So we cover the rational numbers, positive rational numbers, mind you. All right. Um, how about irrational numbers? Well, irrational number can always be represented as a limit case of rational numbers. We did talk about this. So for any irrational number, there is always a sequence of rational which is uh, a a approaching it um, infinitely closely. So basically, we can introduce the same type of approach. I don't want to do it very rigorously right now. But in theory, if you know how to multiply by rational numbers, approximation of any irrational, like square root of 2, for instance, with, its, with, with rational numbers would give you basically the definition of the multiplication of the vector by irrational number as a limit case of multiplication by rational numbers. Okay. Now, um, and by the way, all these manipulations, multiplication by rational, irrational, positive numbers, um, obviously would conform to commutative and associative laws. Again, I don't want to rigorously prove it right now. I will um, leave it for, for later, for the problems. Um, but it, 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 it should be really felt by anybody, since we are only manipulating with the lengths, and length is just the real number. Then all the laws which are applicable to multiplication of the real numbers are applicable here. Okay. Next. Next, I would like to spend some time. Now, by the way, I did not cover negative numbers, only positive. Okay. Now, um, well, I have this sequence of introduction, um, which would introduce negative numbers a little later, and I do have some reasons for this. So let's just follow this this particular structure. So next, what I would like to do is I would like to define how to add two vectors, which are directed identically, just have different lengths. Well, again, since these two are identically directed, then we can always bring them to common 
beginning, let's say beginning of coordinates, this will be one vector, and this will be another vector. Now, they are actually coinciding, so don't pay attention that it's kind of two separate lines. One lies on the top of another. Now, what can be um, the sum of these? Well, let's just think about it. what what's the physical um, meaning, for instance, of, uh, of a vector. Well, it can be a force. So we have some object and one force, pressure by my hand, for instance, can be expressed in, in some kind of a vector. And then um, uh, some, something else would pull it, let's say, with another force towards the same direction. Now, what will be the sum of these forces? Well, you just basically say this is sum. So you have to sum the lengths of one vector and lengths of another vector, and again, retain the same direction. So manipulation of, um, uh, of these vectors, the addition of these vectors, which have identical direction, should result in the vector which has identical di direction with these two, and the lengths, the magnitude of this vector, should be equal to the real sum of these two lengths. I think it's very natural. Um, it, it obviously, it conforms to all these commutative and, uh, and associative laws of addition, because again, we don't really change direction. All vectors, two operands, and the result, the sum of these two, are all identically directed. So all we manipulate is the lengths. We add one length to another to get the result. And obviously, uh, it, it works like the addition of real numbers, basically. So this is a definition of addition of identically uh, directed vectors. OK, so I'm introducing these operations uh, just step by step, trying to make uh, simple ones first, and then I will complicate the issue. Next, what I would like to talk about is something which I would call a null vector. Now, null vector, as the name implies, has the length null. But in this case, it's very difficult to talk about direction, right? Null vector can graphically be represented as a, as a dot, basically. So there is no, no way you can put this arrow. So this vector has certain length, so you can put some arrow at the end, and that's the direction. Point does not have a direction. So when I'm talking about null vector, I can actually say that this null vector has either no direction or you can consider it directed to anywhere you want. It doesn't really matter. Now, what's interesting about this? Well, let's add this vector and this vector, the real vector and the null vector. Well, since null vector can take any direction I want, but it has a length zero, well, why don't I say that, okay, in this particular case, if I would like to add it to this particular uh, vector, it has the same direction. And in which case, the result would be the vector of the same direction and the lengths equal to sum of, the, uh, of two lengths, right? Now, this is zero. The length is zero. So if I will sum them up, I will get exactly the same lengths. So the result of addition of a null vector to any vector would be exactly the same vector we are adding it to. So, this particular concept, null vector, uh, and operation of addition is, is really working exactly like with numbers. You can add zero to any number, and the number will not change. OK, so that's the concept of a null vector. Now, what's next? Uh, next is multiplication by zero. So we knew how to multiply by positive numbers, rational, not not non rational, irrational. Now, how about multiplication by zero? Well, I can always say that the multiplication by zero gives me null vector. So this zero is a number, the multiplier. This zero with this little arrow on the top signifies a null vector. So multiplication of any vector by factor 0 will result in null vector. Now, it, it actually completely corresponds to 
the idea of a new vector and the multiplication. The length is always multiplied, right? So the direction is retained when I'm multiplying, and the length is multiplied by the factor. Factor is zero, so the result of, the, of, of this multiplication is vector which has the length of zero. And I don't really care about direction because this is a zero, this is a, a, a null vector. So I can say that null vector has exactly the same direction as, as SI. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with that. All right. So we know how to multiply vector by zero. The result is null vector. Okay. What else? Now, I would like to, to say the following. Um, I would like to expand my definition of addition from identically directed vectors to opposite directed vector. Let's think about, again, what is vectors meaning from the physical sense or mechanical, whatever. Well, mechanically, for instance, it might signify a displacement, movement. This means I move from this point to this, and this means I move from this point to this. Well, obviously, the result of summation of these two should be I just did not move at all. I, I, I was standing still. Similarly with forces. If you have two forces directed against each other, and they're both applied to the same object, they nullify each other, and the object stands still, basically. It doesn't move anywhere. Um, so, it's very natural to define the operation of addition of these two vectors, which have exactly the same lengths, and they are directed opposite to each other. Um, it makes sense to define their sum as as null vector because they kind of nullify each other, right? So, if I would add a vector with another vector which has opposite direction but the same length, I will get zero. So that's what basically it means. All right, that's good. Now let's consider uh, a little bit more complicated case. What if this is not the same lengths? And I would like to add them together. Well, let's not forget that we would like our laws, which we are defining right now, to be nice, natural, commutative, associative, etc. So, what actually might, might happen in this particular case is the following. I can always represent this vector as a sum of vector which is directed the same direction as this one, but the length should be equal to this one, and then another piece. So it's like sum of these two vectors. This one plus this one. Now, if I will sum them together, now, obviously, again, I'm assuming that whatever we are defining must be associative and, and, and commutative, etc. So we kind of think about this as two these two pieces should nullify each other, and only this one would remain, right? Now, how to describe all this process in a little bit more mathematical form? Well, very simple. So if you have two vectors which are directed in the opposite direction, first of all, you determine the result of, the, of their sum. The result would be the same as the one which has a greater length, which is this in this particular case. Now, what would be the length of the result? Well, you just have to subtract from this length, subtract this one, and then you will get this piece. And that's the result of summation of two vectors, which are directed opposite to each other. By the way, from the, um, uh, from the position of just uh, de defining certain new um, uh, concepts, there is a concept which is called Collinear, collinear vectors. These are vectors which are basically along the parallel lines always, which means either they are identically uh, directed or opposite to each other, but it's still 
within the same direction. So vectors which have uh, direction either identical or opposite to each other, they are lying like on the same line, or lines are parallel depending on where exactly these vectors are positioned um, in space. So they are called collinear, which means they are sharing the same line along which they are both stretching, either in the same direction or opposite. All right, so we have completely defined the operation on collinear vectors, right? Now, next is I would like to return back to um, multiplication. Now, we have completely uh, defined quite well, actually, uh, everything about positive uh, factors, which we multiply the vector. Now, how about negative? Well, the first of all, I would like to define multiplication by minus 1. Now, multiplication by minus 1, I will define as collinear vector, but directed opposite to the one to the A, the one which I'm starting from. Well, it's exactly the same as with numbers. If you have 5, you multiply 5 by minus 1, you get minus 5. So minus 5 and 5 are symmetrical. They have the same distance from 0. So they're very much similar to two vectors which are directed um, opposite to each other, but they are collinear. So if I will get this as a definition, then from this I can obviously define multiplication by any negative number. by any negative number k, where k is less than 0, as multiplication by minus 1, and then multiplication by absolute value of k, right? So since k is negative, multiplication by minus 1 and absolute value of k should give me exactly the same thing, because minus 1 times absolute value of k would actually give me the k if k is less than 0, right? So I know, again, using the uh, associativity, commutative, uh, commutative law, etc., I can always say that, okay, I know how to do this. This is just a uh, vector which is directed opposite to the A. And then I know how to multiply by a positive um, constant, positive real number. It's already defined before. So now, this actually completes the multiplication case. So I can multiply by any constant, positive, uh, negative, zero, uh, rational, uh, whatever. All right, what's left? Left is the most interesting part. This is something which usually um, many uh, teachers just introduced from the very beginning. Okay, this is a definition of the addition of two vectors. And then they basically present what I'm going to present right now. I did all the uh, explanation uh, before this just to gradually uh, bring you to this particular concept. So now we are talking about two vectors which are not collinear. They do not necessarily have the same lengths. But let's consider they are of different direction and different lengths. And the question is how to uh, define naturally, properly, nicely, if you wish. Um, you can <laughs> attach even some other uh, epigets. But anyway, how to define the sum of these two vectors. Again, let's go back to physical um, uh, uh, interpretation of the vector. Let's consider vector uh, represents a displacement. So. Whenever I'm moving, whenever I'm moving from one point to another, that move, that displacement is characterized by this vector, direction and the length I moved. And this is another move. Now, what does it mean that I would like to add together two moves? Let's say I move one mile north and then one mile west. Well, first you move one mile north, right? Then you take this vector 
I patch it at the end. So from here, I put it in such a way that the origin of this vector coincides with the endpoint of the first operand. So this is A, this is B, this is also B. It has exactly the same length and exactly the same direction, but I position it at the end of the first movement. So what's the result of my movement? Well, that's the displacement, which is this. Right? So the rule to add together two vectors which are not necessarily collinear and not necessarily the same lengths is you take one vector now at the very end you attach another vector which is exactly the same directed and the lengths the same as the second operand and the end point of that uh, together with the original point of the first vector of, of the A would give me the lengths and direction of the uh, combined movement so that's the definition. Now, does this definition um, is more or less the same in case vectors are collinear? Well, yes. Because, for instance, B and A are collinear, and I will just uh, put the B as a continuation of A. Obviously, their lengths will add together. And it completely corresponds to my original definition of the addition of two collinear, identically um, directed vectors. How about opposite direction? Well, it's exactly the same thing. Because if this is A, this is B, what's the result from the beginning of A to the end of B, which is this particular piece? And that's exactly what I was talking about when I was saying that from the bigger uh, lengths, you should subtract the smaller one, and the result would be the same, the direction would be the same uh, uh, as, as the bigger vector. <coughs> okay. Now, how else this can be represented? Well, it can slightly differently be drawn, if you wish. Because notice that this is parallelogram. Why? Because this is equal to that. Vectors are equal, it means they are equal in length and parallel. And that's why it's parallelogram. There is actually a theorem about uh, quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel and equal to each other, that this is parallelogram. And the result of summation is basically a diagonal. So another way to present exactly the same way is not to move B to the end of A, but instead build a parallelogram on these two, which are originated at the same point. So you build the parallelogram and take its diagonal from the same point. This is a rule of parallelogram, which is in physics actually very much um, used in many, many different places. That's how we add forces together. So if you have, for instance, two forces um, acting on the same object at different magnitudes and different directions, what's the resulting force? Well, that's the rule of parallelogram, because that's exactly how vectors are, are added together. So, we uh, found how to uh, add two vectors. Okay. What's left? Subtraction, right? How to subtract the vectors. Well, but let's think about it. What does it mean? Well, it means basically this. Right? So, if I want to subtract from A, I want, I want to subtract B. I would like to find out the vector which is, if added to B, would give me A. Now, so basically, obviously, 
this is the vector. So it starts from the endpoint of the B and ends at the endpoint of A. And indeed, if I will add B and C, I will get A. Right? Because that's how I define the addition. So subtraction is very easy, as I said. <clears throat> now, what's interesting, and this is just again uh, some kind of side note, we would like to have certain arithmetic rules, which we used to have, um, to be true for vectors as well. Remember, 5 minus 3 is equal to minus two, is equal to 2. 5 plus minus 3 is equal to 2. 5 plus minus 1 times 3 is equal to 2, right? Now, how about vectors? Well, let's think about it. What if I will do, instead of that, I will do this. Would it be exactly the same? Well, let's just think about this geometrically. Now, this is A. This is B. Now, what's B multiplied by uh, minus 1? It's this one. It's minus 1 times B. Now, this is C, which is equal to A minus B. Now, how about A plus, A plus this vector? Well, Let's just put this parallel uh, shift to this. This is also be minus one, minus one times b. So if I add a and minus one times b, I will get this. It's very easy to prove, and I will probably prove it in some problem, but it's very easy to prove that these two are exactly the same. They have the same lengths and the same direction. So this is just an illustration to the solution, which, which will be in some other lecture, which will follow this particular one. So I was just trying to uh, give you a taste of certain problems, which I would probably uh, ask you to solve, and then I will present the solutions myself. All these problems about these arithmetic operations on vectors to prove that they actually exactly conform to uh, operations uh, with numbers. And one more thing. You remember that vectors have not only geometric representation, but also a tuple representation as an ordered set of numbers. And uh, in particular, set of two numbers represent the vector on the plane, set, uh, set, set of three numbers, a tuple of three, three tuple, as, as, as it's called, represent the vector in three-dimensional space. Now, so the question now is how these representations, tuple representations, are changing with arithmetic operations. But this also will be part of the uh, problems which we will, will, we will be solving together. Uh, because after I have defined, I mean, this lecture is just an in introduction to arithmetic operation. That's where I define these operations. And uh, how, it's, um, how it affects, how these operations affect uh, certain different representation of the vector is a different story, and it will be addressed in subsequent lecture. So far, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I encourage you to to go through uh, notes for this lecture on unizor.com. That's in the part which is dedicated to vectors. And uh, I think the topic is called exactly like this, arithmetic, uh, vector, ve vector arithmetic, I think that's how it's called. Yeah, that's how I call this lecture, vector arithmetic. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.